Well, well, scientists have finally solved the mystery of the Yeti. There was once a man who was hiking in the Himalayas, where he was suddenly snatched up by a white hairy monster that left only a large footprint behind. Not a bad campfire story, right? We've all heard of the Yeti, but only a few people in the world claim to have seen one. What is this human-like monster? Is it dangerous to us? And for that matter, does it even exist at all? Well, Brightside has summed up results from the latest research on the nature of the Yeti. Are you ready for the truth to be unveiled right before your eyes? Of course you are! For thousands of years, people have been searching for the Yeti, for any proof of its existence, and for the origins of this creature. If you're a Yeti fan yourself, you're not going to love what we have to tell you. Now don't take it personal, it's just science. A recent report published in the Journal of the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, not to be confused with the Society A, shows the research results reached by an international team of scientists. These bright minds from Norway, France, Pakistan, Singapore, and the USA have done some serious DNA analysis. They gathered 24 priceless specimens of supposed Yeti origin from museum collections around the world. Hair, bone, skin, and fecal samples. Hmm, Yeti poo? <laughs> Taken from the Tibetan Plateau were studied using cutting-edge scientific technologies. And why this very region? Surrounded by the harsh climate of the Himalayan mountains, this isolated region is the highest point in the world. Not to mention, it's where the fabled Yeti is believed to come from and wander wild and free. It sure does sound like a perfectly inaccessible place for a monster to hide. The international team's research has found that the legendary Yeti, or as some call the abominable snowman, is in fact a bear. More precisely, it's been mistaken for three different extremely rare bear species. The Asian black, the Tibetan brown, and the Himalayan brown. Yes, it's Yeti Lox and the Three Bears. One paw kept at a monastery as a prized piece of the Yeti turned out to belong to a black bear. A revered snow monster bone came from a simple Tibetan brown bear. And finally, what was supposed to be a Yeti tooth actually came from an animal in the dog family. Oops! Now, this wasn't the first time in the history of science when Yeti traces were found out to be from bears. This time, though, the research was much more credible because of the impressive amount of genetic material and the innovative methods used to study it. According to the lead scientist, Charlotte Lindvist, the research team managed to reconstruct the mitochondrial genomes of each specimen. <laughs> mitochondrial what? Well, to put it simply, mitochondrial genomes are a special type of DNA transmitted maternally that can tell a lot about an animal's heritage. As the researchers were trying to study the origins of the Yeti, they also managed to make some important discoveries about the brown bear's evolution. They found that there are, in fact, two separate brown bear populations from this region of the world. A period of glaciation 650,000 years ago forced them to split and form the Tibetan Plateau Bear and the Himalayan Bear, the latter of which is considered critically endangered and looks vastly different from its Tibetan cousin. Linvis explained that her team really didn't intend to debunk the Yeti myth. It's impossible to completely rule out that they do live, she added. Good news for Yeti chasers! Hey, we all love a head-scratching mystery, don't we? For those who still believe this Himalayan creature is real, we've put together yet another list of Yeti facts. Who would have thought you can get a Yeti hunting license? Counting down from number 7, the name. The name Yeti comes from the Tibetan Ye, meaning little man-like animal. Another name of Tibetan origin is Miche, which means man-bear. In 1921, journalist Henry Newman goofed up the translation, giving birth to the abominable snowman nickname. Yeti goes by Batatut in Vietnam, Yaoi in Australia, 
Almas in Mongolia, and of course, Bigfoot in North America. While in Saskatchewan, Canada, he's just big furry stinky guy, eh? Number 6. The Legend The legend of the Yeti is thousands of years old. The Himalayan people used to believe that these hairy snow monsters were there to serve as the guardians of the mountains. They carried out their watch at night, whistling and growling to scare off people trying to climb up to the mountaintops in order to see the gods. Yetis could easily kill those curious uninvited guests with a single swoop of their paw. Number 5. Sightings Back in 326 BC, during his conquest of the Indus Valley region, Alexander the Great heard some locals talking about the abominable snowman. When he asked them to show him this beast, they quickly explained that they couldn't bring him a yeti because they would simply die in the warm valley climate. The first ever recorded sight of a yeti dates back to the 1st century AD. Pliny the Elder, a famous Roman naturalist, mentioned his work in Natural History that on one of his expeditions, he met a satyr, an animal of extraordinary swiftness. Apparently, the creature was so fast that it was impossible to catch. The first published report on a yeti came out in 1925. This detailed account was written by a photographer who was taking part in a British expedition to the Himalayas. However, he failed to get photo evidence since, according to him, the yeti disappeared too fast. Hey, stand there and pose, babe! The first photographs of a yeti were printed in newspapers all over the world in 1951. They were taken by mountaineer Eric Shipton, who found wide, mysterious 12 to 13 inch long footprints on a glacier in the Himalayas. After that, numerous expeditions set off to the region in search of yetis. Probably the most famous of them was that of Sir Edmund Hillary who claimed he had found Yeti hair on top of Mount Everest. The search for the Yeti continues, and a group of Japanese adventurers took some pictures of Yeti footprints in 2008. Some enthusiasts are positive that Yeti brothers and sisters live in China and Siberia as well. Number 4. Yeti Memo The belief in the Yeti was so strong in the middle of the 20th century that even the U.S. State Department joined the craze. In 1959, they issued Foreign Service Dispatch 75, a memo with regulations on how to deal with a Yeti upon encountering one. Workers were told to take pictures of it and capture it, but not kill it. They were also supposed to pay a fee and get an official permit to be out in Yeti territory. Although it looks like these regulations weren't strictly enforced, because tons of people still got a hold of numerous Yeti bits and pieces, which became parts of museum, university, and private collections around the world. Number 3. Hunting License Would you like to go hunting for some Yetis? Apparently, if you have 550 bucks, you can officially call yourself a Yeti hunter. The government of Nepal sells licenses allowing people to wander through the woodlands and desolate areas of the country in search of the Yeti. This started back in the 1950s, the time of a global fascination with the snow-dwelling monster. So far, no one has been lucky enough to have captured one, but the Nepalese government has definitely been lucky enough to make a killing out of people's attempts. Hey, look! There's Elvis riding on a Yeti! Number 2. A profitable business The Yeti business is a huge moneymaker in the Himalayan region. In addition to those hunting permits, there's an array of Yeti-themed hotels, the most popular of which is the five-star hotel Yak and Yeti. Kinda sounds more like a talk show. There's even a Yeti Airlines that flies from Kathmandu to the mountains and a wildlife sanctuary in Bhutan whose primary mission is the conservation of the Yeti. No wonder they're so happy in Bhutan. Finally, there are Yeti adventure parks throughout the world. Whee! And number 1. The Yeti in Pop Culture 
It's really hard to find a person who has never ever seen a Yeti. We're talking about the cartoon and movie versions of it. You probably remember Bumble the Abominable Snowman from the classic Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Once his toothache was no longer a problem, he instantly became a pretty nice guy. Sorry, monster. Helping Santa to decorate his Christmas tree. We all loved, or hated, it really depends, the Yeti in Monsters, Inc. The 9-foot monsters protecting the entrance to Shangri-La scared the bejeebers out of us in The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. The list of Yeti TV and movie appearances goes on and on. We all love him for one reason or another, even though he's supposed to be scary. The Yeti even made an appearance in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and Grand Theft Auto 5. Try to find him in the snows next time you play. Finally, all Yeti fans are sure to have a Lego figurine of their favorite big-footed monster. He even appeared in the Lego movie. Hey, is anybody collecting royalties for this? <laughs> of course, Yeti Locks and the Three Bear. Do you still believe that the Yeti exists? Or do you think the scientists are right and it's actually a kind of bear? Feel free to share your opinion in the comment section below. If you like this video, let us know by clicking on the thumbs up button. If this video gets 300,000 likes, we'll share more stories of mysterious creatures inhabiting our planet. Like the Californians. By the way, if you like mysteries, you'll also love our video about mysteries hidden in famous paintings. Here's the link to it. Subscribe to our channel to be the first to see our fun updates. Always look on the bright side of life.